Living with her husband poses difficulties for Tina Martin. Having a child late in life presents Tina with its own set of issues. Lately, Tina's husband has been acting out, and his behavior causes an affront to their relationship. Wanting to raise one child, not two, Tina comes to cheaters for answers as to why her husband seems to have reverted from a full-grown man into a teenager with attitude. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. The thing of it is, things that have been, uh, that have changed recent that I really have started noticing is uh, he's just not been attentive to me like he always was, you know, and, and it was very important that we always have like a, at least one special night out of the, out of the week, if not maybe two weeks now, because we both have really big, uh, busy schedules. And and uh, when it got to the point where I was like fixing his favorite meal and let, yet he had to work late or wasn't hungry, that kind of thing, that was kind of a... A, you know, that made me question things. Our son, you know, he's just been always there for him, and and now it's like missing a practice here or there, not being there for him, not not being there to tuck him in, you know, things like that. You know, you just notice those little things. Lester, age 55, a lot manager at a car auction suspected of discounting his relationship. Cheaters Intel deploys a squad of investigators to the suspect's place of employment. After lunchtime, the suspect waits for someone in his van. An unknown lady shows up, and the two leave the auction yard in Lester's van. The pair stop briefly at a drive through After ordering lunch, the suspect drives the female in his van to a nearby lake. Then, Lester and his lady friend eat lunch. I found condoms, not only in the house, in the door, but also in the van. And he's got, you know, like a huge van and it's customized and everything. And so that's, that was, that was just it. You know, that made me question things very much. So I brought up the, uh, finding the condom in his van because I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. And of course, you know, his his thing was he said that, you know, he he had let a friend of his from work borrow the van. He had to work late and he told him, well, since I'm working late, you can borrow the van, you know. and. He said he must have left it in there, and I'm like, there's something in here that tells me that it's, you know, there's something else going on, and I really don't want that to be going on. Having finished the meal, Lester hops out and walks around the vehicle to get into the back. Lester and his lady come to terms with the floorboard. After a few minutes of illicit fun, Lester exits the van shirtless. The suspect hops back into the driver's seat. The van returns to the auction yard, and Lester and his mystery maid both go inside. You know, the thing of it is, is that I really, really uh, am concerned about, you know, what if my my suspicions are true, and, and what that's going to do, not just to me, because I know how it's going to affect me. I've been there before, and, I, and I'm going to be so angry, so free and angry, and just, you know, devastated at the same time, but... There's, here's uh, Alex, you know, and he's involved. He, you know, he's a big part. <laughs> uh, the worst scenario to me is that Alex and Austin hate his father. I don't really want him to hate his father. They can't, you know, that that's not going to be good for him. Uh, I, I've got students in my class that, you know, are raised only by their mothers, and they don't get to see their fathers and stuff. But I don't want that with my our son. I don't want that. I, I want, I still want Lester to be there, you know, for Alex, you know. If he can turn his back on me, that's one thing, but don't turn his back on his son. He just he can't do that, you know, because Alex needs his father. All boys need their fathers. I think that's really important. Cheaters detectives keep up the stakeout. Once again at lunchtime, the suspect waits for his companion in his van. As soon as she gets in, the pair drive away. A cheater's mobile unit follows the suspect in his date, now identified as Maria Davis, to a convenience store. A short time later, Lester and Davis exit the store. Lester deploys his arm protectively and wraps Davis's shoulders as they head to the van. The suspect drives back to his favorite lakeside parking lot. And again, Lester climbs into the back of the creeper van. The two adulterers begin to get busy in the back seat. After a bit, Lester gets out, tossing away an item which cheaters' detectives discern to be a used prophylactic. Flipping his sunglasses onto the windshield, the suspect fumbles with his shirt. Lester enters his van and takes the wheel. The pair drive back to work. 
Spotting the suspect's routine, Cheaters keeps the stakeout in place. The suspect waits for his co-worker, and once Davis gets into the van, Lester drives the two back to his favorite watering hole. Finding the lake crowded today, the suspect adjusts the shades on the van in order to give a small bit of privacy. Things begin to shake, rattle, and roll as the pair of lovebirds get down to it. A short time later, a shirtless Lester climbs out. The suspect again litters the environment with his dirty love glove. Lester gets into the driver's seat. Davis rolls up the shades. The only change in routine consists of the suspect dropping his hottie off at a bus stop before he heads home to a disillusioned Tina. Coming up, the confrontation. Need to spy on a cell phone, retrieve deleted texts, or set up a hidden camera? Then visit CheaterSpyShop.com. Now, with proof of infidelity firmly established, Cheater subpoenas Tina to give her a full briefing of the case facts. Concerned about the status of her marriage, Tina faces facts and views the information. Tina, first thing I'd like to say is thank you for coming out this afternoon. I understand we had to pull you away from a few things, so we're glad to have you here. As you know, we have conducted our investigation, Tina, and we have come up with some interesting findings. But before I show you that, I just want to prepare you for what I'm about to show you. Okay. Some people can find it disturbing, it can upset you, so I just want to forewarn you before I show you this. Okay. Are you prepared to see what we have come up with? Uh, yes, I guess so. All right. Tina, we begin our investigation outside of Lester's workplace. A few moments later, we see this female emerge. She gets into the passenger side of his van, and they drive. As our detectives follow these two, they arrive at a fast food joint. They grab some food at the fast food joint, and they drive away. That's when we see the two of them arrive at a lake. He parks his van. We see them eating food together. That is him y yes, on the driver's uh -huh. side, yeah? That's when we that's see- That's my Lester, yes. That's when we see your Lester get out of the van. He then walks over to the double doors, opens them, and the two of them go in the back. A few moments pass. We see Lester get out of the passenger side of the vehicle without his shirt on. No, 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 no. That can't be. That... He goes over to the driver's side, gets in, and they leave together. They then return to his workplace. I can't believe he's doing that. And she leaves. It. Do you recognize that woman, Tina? Have you ever seen no, her before? I, no, no. But obviously, obviously, it's someone from his work. It's got to be because he's at work. On this day of our investigation, Tina, we are outside of his workplace. She gets into the passenger side of his van. Before he gets in, he receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you remember this, even this day. Hi. I was going to, but my uh, boss said he wanted me to do some papers, so I, I gotta get these done. This is a bunch of bull. Wait a minute, now you told me you would be home early two nights ago, and then again tonight. You know, I'm trying to take care of the family, you know, and our son and you, and and try to do better for us. So, you know, just just leave it alone, and I'll be home as soon as I can. Yeah. All right. I love you. I love you too, baby. Bye. 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 He then leaves his workplace after completely lying to you, Tina, over the phone, and they arrive at that same lake from the previous day. He parks his van, he gets out of the passenger side, goes over to those double doors. That's when we see him draw the shades. We then see the van rocking back and forth. No, 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 I'm no, no, really no, sorry no. About this, this can't be, this... <laughs> Sometime later, we see him exit. He then throws a prophylactic from his hand as he exits the van. Did you see that hit the ground? Yes. Gets into the van, undraws the shades. That's when we see her fixing her shirt, getting back up into that passenger seat. She was topless when to she me? got up. Why would he do this to our family? After finishing up these antics at the lake, they leave and he drops her off at this bus stop. Who is she? That's what we're gonna find out. He then returns home for the evening. Tina, at this point in time, we know exactly where they're at. They're at a location very close to here. I'll let our detective know that we are on our way. Hi. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I, I want to Right this way, them. please. This is their van right here. Yeah. Let's pull up and uh, let's just block them in. You ready? Yes. All right. 
Everybody out. He's in, right there. Lester, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah. What happened, man? Who, who's this? Who's this girl? Uh, she, uh, she, she's just from work. She's just from work. Yeah. Have you? And, and we're, we're, we're what just, are you doing? Why? Are, why are all of her clothes we're, we're, off? Why, what are you doing? We're just. Uh, what are you freaking doing? I was doing a. We're married for I, 15 I was years. doing a damn taxes. Rob, you're not doing now. Yeah. Rob, you have a son with me. You have a. I know I do. Have a seven. Yeah, but if you would be doing what I want you to do, then I wouldn't have to yeah, mess with her. Then why don't you, you got to communicate with me, Leslie. This is bull****. Leslie, that's my dad. I'm going to communicate with you. Yeah, bull****, Leslie. Did you, did you have any idea that this is no. his wife of 15 years? No. They have a son together? No, no. I don't. How did that happen exactly? Do you work with this man? Yes, I'm here. What are you freaking doing? Well, you know, 15 years. Now take this and just stop it. Stop okay. it where you need it. Okay. God almighty, I cannot believe you would do this to a family, Liz. Well, I, I wasn't doing nothing. Yeah, well, your shirt's off, girl. It's hot Wait outside. What do you think? Outside you were in the van. What so what? We were what just hanging out. Hanging out with yeah. your shirt off. Yeah. Coming up. The conclusion. Need to spy on a cell phone? Retrieve deleted texts? Or set up a hidden camera? Then visit cheaterspyshop.com. What are you doing? Who's in here with you? Did you have any idea that this is no. his wife of 15 years? We were just hanging out. Hanging out with yeah. your shirt off. Are these condoms? Condoms. So what is this about? But you haven't been doing nothing for me for the past ten. I, I, I haven't been. To, I, I don't. I keep this figure. I keep. I do what I do. I work every day, just like you work every day. I take care of our son. I make sure you have clean clothes. I even run your friggin' bubble bath for you, and so you running one for me. And I ain't doing nothing for you. No, I'm in that bed No, now. you're not doing enough for me. No, I, sir. I have two questions. Is this you outside of your work with that lady? And why are there condoms in your in your uh, van? What are these for? Well, that's me, and we were just getting off from work. You. you were just getting yeah. done with work? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's all you were doing? That's yeah, all we were doing. You're going to keep lying to me? Yeah. I'm not lying to you. Really? Okay. You're not lying to me? No, I'm not lying so to you. So this day when you got a phone call from her, and you guys draw the shades in your van right in that same parking spot back there, and your van was rocking back and forth? Well, that was because of the sun, you know? The sun makes your van rock back and forth. No, it makes it hot. Really? Yeah. So why did you get out with your shirt off and throw a condom on the floor? If there was any time to tell the truth, you don't think that right now would probably be the no, best time? No, it's not. Not, not right now. Not even to your woman? No, not, not my wife. you shared not most of your life with? No. What about your nine-year-old son, Alex? Well, that considers you know, you an awesome father. Un unfortunately, he's part of the problem and part of, part of the issue. Your son is part of the problem. Yeah. And I didn't even know he was married. So what did you just say? What did you just say about Alex? Alex? Well, I love Alex, but you wanted a kid. I really didn't want a kid. You told you know? me you wanted a family, Leslie. You said you wanted us to have. It sounded a family. good, didn't it? And you bought it, didn't, uh, didn't well, you? Yeah, so it's all just about buying your story, buying your so, you got so this it. isn't the first time, is that what you're telling me? No, this isn't the first time I thought I was... I mean, I have a couple oh, different shots happily, of you. We were happily married. You for, sh for a short time. Will you hold this for a second? Short time? Sure, those are yours. Yeah, yeah, I called on those, you're going to need them. What is going on? You didn't. You told me you were separated. Are you kidding me? Well, I used you too. What? I used her too. What the... Yeah, I used you too. So you dipped the pen in the corporate ink, basically. Yep. You got it. You desecrated your workplace, your relationship. You know what's yeah, you're a pig. You're a pig. You're I don't believe you would do this. I only mean What do you mean, lucky woman she's a woman? Yeah, if she wasn't a woman, I'd hit her back. You'd hit her back? Yeah. What is, right. what is Alex going to think? What is our son going to think? What did you He No, he's been missing you just the last two months, three months. And then now? I'll get, I'll, gonna, I'll, gonna, I'll, gonna, I'll, I'll get together with him one of these days. You'll get together with him. Yeah. Okay, so you know, you know the what I've talked to you about the children in my class. It hurt 
over the years. I know I've talked to you about how they hard because their daddy's not there. And you're telling me well, there's going to be the for I, I tell you what I wanted you to hear. So when your son grows older so and he wants to meet his father, and the first time he meets you and he knocks you out, how's that going to make you feel? Mm. Probably won't be feeling much, huh? Probably not. Because I know that's what I'd do if you did this to my mother. Probably not. So ridiculous. Oh, my God. Have you got from being at work and stuff? How many other women have you got? Like, I did not Come on, Lester. Talk to me. You, you know, you got all those words, all that yeah. line and They'll stuff. They'll get over it. You know, apparently. And you apparently, get over it too. You know, talk yeah. about it. But Lester, I can handle anything. You can handle anything? Yeah. Talk didn't to seem me. you could handle a relationship in 15 tell years. Me, I mean, tell, you know, if nothing else, tell me more lies. You know, tell me how he's going to get over that. How I suck. I don't have to tell you nothing no more. <laughs> Oh no! What? What? Are you a little embarrassed? You should embarrassed? have been embarrassed. You should have been embarrassed a long time ago. I'm not ago. embarrassed. I'm no. not embarrassed. You know? You're not embarrassed. No, I'm not embarrassed. So you have no remorse for any of your mistakes or anything? Nope. Obviously. I got what I could from her, and obviously. They cannot be. You're lying. You're lying. You're dying to yourself. I don't understand how you could do this. Like. You have no regard at all for your son. Oh. Not at all. Live or die. You don't care. Nope. <laughs> this cannot be. This cannot. Be. You're a piece of work. Not. Yeah. God, I'm just glad I don't have anything more than just my hands. You know, I could just, oh, Lester. Well, have at it, baby. You know? You want me to just punch you? You know, I'm it. out of character. You're out of character. I'm not doing out of character. This is for us. This is for me. Have you, Lester? You're not worth it. You're not worth it anymore. Can you, can you please take me home? I'll take you home when I'm ready. I'm ready to leave now. Why would you, you want to go home with this man? I'm ready to leave. You're gonna take her home. That's all right. You just take, take me to the bus stop. Like, I don't even care. I just wanna get out of here. Let's I just start. can't believe you would do this to 15 Let's years. 15 years. Up. My lawyers are gonna, gonna chew you up on that 15 years. You know that? We'll see. Yeah, you, you think this what? evidence is gonna help you when you guys get divorced? Yeah, saying I'm that you don't care if you're, I'm if going to use this. If your son's alive or not? I'll take care of Alex. Uh, you're now you'll take care, care of Alex. Alex. I don't think there's a word that could even dictate how I feel. Towards he you as a father. He believed in you. He believed in us. Let alone a husband. Sex. How can you? I, I can't even fathom. It was a whole. It was a whole story, all made up. It wasn't no fairy tale. You know, it doesn't end good. It was a fairy tale for you for a while. Please, I don't do this. I don't even. I'm... <laughs> Lester, do you have anything else to say? To oh your, my God. To your ex-wife. No. This not, not, not at this time. I don't have anything to say. Okay, yeah. Just take me back. Just take me back. Load up. Load up. Let's load up. Load up. Load up. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate what you've done. I just, this is unreal to me. This is really unreal. But, but yet yeah, I know in the real world and and where I, you know, what I need to do and where I need to be. This is what I needed to shock me into knowing that, you know, he's full <laughs> I mean, Let's really, I mean, God, money. In layman's yeah. terms, yes, uh -huh. completely, full of it. Desperate for answers, Keisha seeks assistance from cheaters. Me and Duke met in middle school. We share a special connection that no one could break. It was like a bond that you know, we was young, but we was off and on. Uh, it was just something that I didn't know what was going on. Uh, we dated, we broke up, because that's what kids do. We didn't know any better. When we got back together a couple years ago, we was, we was amazing together. Duke made me feel like a queen. He makes me feel, he put me on a pedestal to where that I feel like can no one touch me. And he just lifts me off my feet every time. Duke, age 27. An insurance salesman accused of upselling himself to a different agent. Cheaters charges a team of operators with surveillance of the suspect. Sometime later, investigators spy the suspect when he comes outside to grab a bag from his car which the authorities have forbidden him to drive. Duke gets into the waiting vehicle. The cheater's team follows the white sedan to a strip mall. Duke and his unknown female friend step into a fast food establishment. Here recently, Duke has got a DWI. He had got his license suspended. And normally I take him where he needs to go. 
But here recently, he don't need my help. He don't, and every time I ask him, do he need my help, he always tell me no. Now, Duke's friends take him everywhere he needs to go, and he rarely asks me to take him anywhere, and I don't get to see him nor spend time with him. When I do call him, it's either he be distracted or he not interested in being on the phone with me. It's just, his behavior is just bad. The alleged adulterer and his companion finished dinner with a sweet treat. They conversed near the vehicle. Their dessert finished, Duke shows he is of royal attitude when he graciously opens the driver's side door for his consort. The deceptive duo drives back to the suspect's residence. Suspect Duke grabs his bag as he exits. The pair use the fleeting moments to canoodle behind the car. The day ends when suspect Duke walks back to his residence as his date leaves. I just want to know what woman would deal with a man that been through a DWI with a bullet that, who would deal with that bullet? I want to know what the f he's doing and why the hell he's treating me like a side piece of ass. I want to know if he's fooling around, messing on me, or is he really chilling with his friends? And if he not, I'm going to have a serious problem with that. And it's, it is going to be hell to pay because we've been through way too much to let another woman in. And I'd be damned if I lose my spot. Surveillance continues as Cheater stakes out the suspect's residence. Sometime during the evening, operatives spot the white sedan. Duke joins his mistress in the car. The suspect and his companion drive to a park. The pair share some drinks next to the back of the car. Duke leans in and receives a kiss from the young lady known only as Jessica. Sometime later, the suspect's date wipes his sweaty face. Innocence turns to lust. Duke and his lady friend make out on the trunk. Once their evening is done, they both gain entry to the car. Duke again proves his gallantry by holding the car door open. The troublemaking twosome drives back to the suspect's residence. Duke looks a bit wobbly and gives his clandestine cutie several smooches. They separate. Jessica drives away and Duke strolls into his apartment. Spotting a trend, Cheaters sticks with a stakeout of Duke's residence. This night, investigators watch the familiar white sedan pull up in front of the suspect's residence. Cheaters detectives follow Duke and Jessica to a shopping center that hosts a pizzeria. The two enter the restaurant. Sometime later, the dastardly duo takes the pizza pie to the young lady's car. Duke squeezes his appetizer briefly before the main entree. The suspect's secret side girl slips onto her trunk. Duke and his dinner date enjoy each other more than the meal. Sometime later, they pack everything up. Duke, in his perfect, gentlemanly way, holds the car door open for his private partner. Tightly followed by cheaters, the white sedan makes its way back to the suspect's abode. Once there, Duke gropes and kisses his side right an inordinate amount of time. Sometime later, the two part, both lips and ways. As the suspect walks inside, thinking that nothing is wrong, Cheaters preps the truth for a suspicious Keisha. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that the suspect has shown his true intentions, Cheaters places a call to Keisha. Riddled with dread, Keisha still agrees to meet. Keisha, uh, first thing I'd like to say is I really appreciate you calling us. Um, I understand that you've been through a lot with your man, Duke. I just want to ask you, are you prepared to see our investigation? Yes. Are you sure? I'm positive. All right, surveillance, please. 
Keisha. We begin our investigation outside of Duke's residence. And sometime later, we see him walk out, goes to the trunk, grabs a backpack, and this white vehicle is waiting out front. He gets in the passenger side, and the white vehicle drives away. Do you recognize that car? No. Okay, well, they drive some distance, and they arrive at a fast food restaurant, and he actually gets out with a female. She walks inside. He follows behind her. So they go into the restaurant, eat some food, and that's when we see the two of them come out together. I'm going to stop it right there. you recognize her at all? No. you never seen her? No. Okay. They walk outside the fast food establishment. That's when we see them conversing by her vehicle. He's got an ice cream cone in his hand. He then opens up the driver's side door, escorts her into her vehicle. He gets in the passenger side. They drive away from the restaurant as our detectives follow them. They return to Duke's residence. We see the two of them get out and they go to the back of the car and exchange a kiss. He grabs his backpack. He walks back inside his house and she leaves. On this day of our investigation, we're outside Duke's home. That's when we see, sometime later, a white vehicle pulls up. We see Duke emerge, walks over to the passenger side, and gets in the vehicle. As our detectives follow the two of them, they arrive at a park. We see her get out of the vehicle. She sits on the trunk. He's got some alcoholic beverages. We see them drinking beer, sitting on the back of the trunk, being very romantic. He's kissing her and just... I mean, he's all over this girl. She takes out a handkerchief, wipes the sweat off his face. And during this time, listen, I know this is really hard to watch. No one deserves this. Okay? And just realize, you're not in this alone. You're going to be all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Listen, we're all here for you. During the time that they're at this park, drinking and partying and doing their thing, Duke receives a phone call from Ikeisha. What you're about to hear is the audio from that conversation. Tell me if you can remember this, okay? Hey, what's up, man? Hey. What's up, you okay? Yeah, I'm about to get down to the store. What you doing? Sitting over here drinking, watching these kids up here. They playing football. You ain't around no females, are you? Nah, there's something over there, uh, but they with their kids. I ain't, you know, you know me. I'm all for you. Uh-huh. What are you doing? Why are you accusing? I'm gonna go to the store. Uh, who's sitting next to you? Nobody. Yeah, I'll be on that. Yeah. I love you, man. I love you too. No, what? I can't even watch no more. I don't. I don't have to show you the rest. Listen, if you've seen what you need to see, we can go. We'll get on the road, get a location on them, and we'll go confront these two and make Duke be held responsible for this. All right? Are you ready? All right, let's get out of here. Come on, right this way. I just got some intel from our detective. We know exactly where they're at. They're at a park together, so we're actually going there right now to confront these two. All right, that's our detective up there in the blue T-shirt. Let's go ahead and pull up right to him. All right, you guys ready? Let's go. Everybody out. Let's go. Gomez, where are they at? They're on the right, sitting on the bench. Right on the right hand side. What the f is this, dude? What's going on? What is this? Who is her? What is her? What are y'all doing? Can I talk to you for a minute? No. What is her? Who is her? You got to give me some answers. What you talking about? Who is her? Why you bring all these people? You know, you sitting there telling me that you ain't with her no more. You said, can you get the move the camera? Man, chilling with my homegirl. We ain't even doing that. That's your homegirl? Your homegirl. You kissed your homegirl? Man, what you talking about? What is you What is you talking about kissing? Kissing? You want to see me? You want to play that game? This ain't you? What is you? Nah, that ain't me, man. I don't even know. This isn't you? That's not you? Nah, I ain't got to see you. So you lied to her. So you lied to me, right? You lied to me. Who's you? That's you? That's 
shoes. Man. She bought you those shoes? She bought you those shoes? She bought you those shoes? That's how we're doing it? Give me my wow. That's how you're doing it? Coming up, the conclusion. Can I get your side of the story exactly what happened? I've been with Duke for two years. He's supposed to been and left this mother bitch. Yeah, this he completely lied to you, just so you know. Look at all these people out here looking around at me. Come on. Come on. Hey, y'all don't do that. You got, you got a whole camera crew out here. I need my shoes. Dude, did she buy you those shoes? Excuse me, you guys. Excuse me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Duke, not you. Duke, can I just ask you a question? What's up, man? How come you wouldn't just tell her the truth? Look, I need you to get back with the camera. I'm good, okay? I don't know what you're talking about. Really? This isn't you? That's that somebody else. No, that's your Are ass. you going to tell me that's the truth or not? Man? Tell the truth about what, man? You got five that this seconds. is really you. I'm going to knock your ass out. You, about you about got five here? seconds. That looks a lot like you, man. You got five seconds. <laughs> Come on. Man, what y'all doing, man? The truth is going to follow you no matter where you go. <laughs> hey, man, what y'all doing, man? Look at him. You know what? You have you a good time with him, baby girl. Listen, Duke, all, I, all I'm here for, my name's Clark Evelyn with the Cheaters, as you know. She hired us because she thought you were cheating on her. You have to go hire all these people. Listen, everyone makes mistakes, man. All I, all I want for her sake... It's just the truth. So, I mean, if there's any time to tell the truth and explain what happened, this is probably going to be your only chance. Though. You, can I talk to you? You want to talk to What you talking? What you got to talk about? You said he lying? Which one you want to lie to now? Yeah. Who you want to lie to now? Huh? Can y'all what? stop? What's up? Hey, who is you? Can y'all stop? Duh, I'm just, I've been here for two years. Hey. But, hey. Two years. It don't matter. Stop. What? It don't matter. What? Y'all not going to do all this. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. 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 You don't think this is a big deal? What if I walked out here with you and you saw her with another man? You'd be pissed. Think about it. If she got a DWI and you were taking care of her, making sure she had rides everywhere. Come on, let me take you back to your mama house where all your mother clothes at that I mother put in your closet. Come hey, on. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? What? What's up? So what exactly did he tell you? He, he's been with you for two years? Yeah, we've been together off and on for two years. You know, I know about old girl, but what he told me was that him and her was done. Can we talk with that? We don't need them in our business. You just let the world know. Come on. You let the world know. You can't keep it to yourself. Man, me and Duke are friends before anything, you know? So, like, if you need me, I'm going to be there. But, Duke, I ain't got time for that. Duke. What's up, man? Did, you, did he tell you the truth? What's going on? You can talk to me, man. Let them let them talk, but just, dude, what happened? Man. Did you get sick of her? Were you tired of it? Like, what really happened? Oh, God. It wasn't that. Man, it's just. I need. Was I, it, was I was it, just. Was I, it, I got bored. Was it drinking? That too. A lot of it. I wasn't trying to hurt the girl. Neither one of them. I'm done. You not done? Yeah, I've been done. I'm a, done. I've been done when I told him that he needed to leave your mother ass alone if he wanted to with me. Girl, you better shut the up. Hey, come get your out of my mother car. I really love both of them. I can't even lie. Why don't you tell her the truth then? Tell her how you really hey. feel, man. I'll listen. You, you don't have to hit each other. Be a man. Step up to the plate and tell her what happened, man. You know how I feel. Tell, tell her exactly you what you just said to me. I tell you all the time. I just—he was just really drinking. Already. And she called like when you ain't around. She I always be sitting on talking on the phone with her. She just been coming through. It, it was me being selfish. Duke, come get your out my mother. Car. You're going home with her, or wherever the f she came from. You're going back with that. Time for that. Dude, look at it this way. The worst is over with. She's seen it all. So now it's like all, I mean, I think you probably couldn't do anything worse. Here's the, fla here's the flower he gave me. It's a wilted rose, just like y'all. You got her flowers. You don't even give me your damn flowers. <laughs> Work 
loves you. Uh -uh. I mean, if you don't think this you girl might be loves you, man, I'm really, ready to go. you ready to go? Can we talk without them? No. We can't talk without them. No. Good luck, Duke. All right. You okay? You all right? Come here, come here. Hey, 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 listen, 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 <laughs> listen, listen, listen. It's gonna be all right. Let's let's load up. We'll get out of here. He ain't worth it, all right? Come on, man. You get this out of my face, man. Don't touch the camera, yeah, Don't touch the camera, man. man get, get, job. Come on, bro. I know that was I know that was a lot, but hey, that 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 man ain't ready to do anything. He can't even take care of himself. I mean, he's walking around with no shoes. Come on, man. Yeah. What's next for you? Now that you don't have to worry about lugging around this child that's stuck in a man's body that can't even control a simple drink of alcohol. Let go. Let go. Let go and move on. Coming up next, Cheaters Revisits. Oh, chết rồi. Cô lên đường. Đi đây, ăn một đại kết. Nè đây, bắn 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 đi, tao có gọi hồn mà. Mày mày bắn 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 ra dính phát. Nó đang ở phía rồng này thì mẹ đéo ra có mắt được đâu 